Hello crafty friends, it's me Laura and this is my 10 cards one kit video using the Love From Lizzie May 2019 card making kit. As I'm recording this voiceover there are still a couple kits left in stock so do check the links in the description and I'll be sure to link to where you can get your hands on the last few pieces or maybe some of the add-on or coordinating pieces um, that you can see here. Okay, so card number one, I am creating a really simple design. This definitely kind of jumped out to me when I first saw the contents of the kit. I looked at the stickers and I was like, okay, this, this is going to be a card on its own. It was the very first thing that kind of popped into my head and I just needed to pick some patterned paper to go with it. So I decided to go with the... Um, well, I guess the, the ones that are on screen right now. I'm going for quite a simple design and I'm um, just going to go ahead and pop up these little kind of cactus plant pots. So stinking cute. Um, I'm giving them an area to sit on by using a strip of one of the patterned papers and outlining that in one of the new sway peel offs or as I keep calling them the wibbly woos probably going to keep referring to them um, as that, so do excuse me. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it adds a really nice pop of yellow to the background there and just, just kind of accentuates, creates kind of a faux matte behind the patterned paper. And then once I've got those stick down, sticked down, <laughs> that's, that's good English, um, I've gone ahead and used some anti-static powder tool just to remove any of the static cling on that background piece and I'm stamping one of the stamps included in the kit onto the background and using a Love From Lizzie embossing powder. This one is so beautiful. It it possibly coordinates a little bit too well with the patterned paper that I'm using so it kind of doesn't pop quite as much as I would have liked. However, you'll see how I fix that in just a moment. So I went ahead and heat set everything and then I just grabbed a black pen to go ahead and outline the hello stamp uh, sentiment and that just helps to um, make that kind of pop from the background. You could do this with a white gel pen as well if you have that on hand. It's just a nice easy way to, um, to kind of help whatever it is that you've embossed or stamped down kind of pop uh, if the colour that you've used is a little bit too kind of matchy matchy. So I'll go ahead and finish up outlining and then I will add this piece to the card base. You'll notice for today's video I'm actually using liquid glue almost constantly. You almost always see me using my ATG and um, there's nothing kind of wrong, I haven't gone off it or anything, um, I'm just being super lazy and it needs a refilling and I haven't got around to doing it yet. So, um, so I grabbed what I had on my desk and I used some liquid adhesive to go ahead and stick this piece down. It's been cut to be ever so slightly smaller than my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And then the last thing I'll add to this is just some of these stickers. I decided to use some of the black hearts just to kind of tie in the black of the plant parts, the black outlining of the hello uh, stamp sentiment, and just kind of bring some more of that colour into this piece. And I think it adds a really nice touch. So you'll notice with today's video quite a few of my cards are quick and easy to make. They're definitely easy to replicate and you could kind of switch up the design and use some different stickers or sentiments if you like, but I think they're all fairly straightforward. Okay, so for card two, I'm grabbing some deep purple ink and this ink kind of coordinated really well with one of the card stocks that was included in the kit. I cut down all of my card stock in half and then folded it in half to make my card bases. So I wanted to have something that would match in terms of stamping. Excuse my head getting in the way there. <laughs> so I drew a diagonal line on a scrap piece of white card stock. I keep a whole bunch of these in my deck desk just cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half so they're good to go whenever I need them and then I'm just working my way through inking up this stamp and repeatedly stamping it all over the background to make my own kind of custom patterned paper and I will go ahead and erase that line 
I'm getting my head kind of right in the way on this one and I think it's just so I could look through that camera stamp to make sure I was getting the best possible placement. Um, it's one thing I really like about the um, photopolymer stamps is that you can just look through your block and straight through the stamp and see exactly where it's going to land so there's no kind of guesswork or surprises although I do manage to get things in the wrong place even with that technique. If I'm not filming I'll get my head kind of right above everything um, but when I'm filming I, I do try and avoid that so you can see my desk rather than just the back of my head. Okay so I trimmed that piece down just a little and then I've got some elements I'm going to work with. I was trying to pick out some of my peel-offs which you'll see I've got in my peel-off storage box which I am loving. And I decided to pick out some of the black ones here, and these are the black sways, the wiggly woos. <laughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and lay that down again just to create that kind of faux matting detail. It almost looks like there's a piece of black cardstock behind this that's had like a dye, a decorative like edge dye run along the sides of it, but without all that extra work or wasting any cardstock behind this piece because I am terrible for that. I love the look of matting but then I'm like oh no one's gonna see this piece of cardstock and I spent I spent my you know my my hard-earned money on this paper and I'm gonna go and hide it so usually it kind of puts me off so the the peel-offs are like my guilt-free way of adding um faux matting and layering. So I've grabbed the shine piece here and I'm sticking that down on top of the pink specialty cardstock. Again, included in the kit, I've just gone ahead and trimmed that down to fit this piece. And then I've got the sticker, so much fun, that works just perfectly in that top right hand corner to add a little flag element to this piece. So I'll go ahead and stick it down onto that cardstock and you can see here how well the, the ink and the cardstock match. I mean it's not obviously a perfect match because they're from two different companies but it, um, it worked really well for what I wanted. Then I'm adding just a little bit of shine and dimension to the lens of each of these cameras, kind of where you can see it, just by using the Nuvo drops that were included in the kit. And these are one of the... Um, dual drop uh, colours so it dries slightly transparent. Okay, on to the next card. So for this one, I love this pattern paper. And again, I mean, we were just talking about how I don't like to hide my pattern paper on my cardstock. So I knew I was gonna create some layering with some oval dyes. So rather than um, adding that layering and color, uh, coloring, covering up the center of that white piece with the little trees, I decided to die cut the shape out first and then die cut that same shape from the pattern paper that I was going to use as my layer and just kind of puzzle piece them inside. Went ahead and dropped my ink pad on my desk, that wasn't too smart. <laughs> I'll clean that up with my stamp chamois and try again. Um, so with that die cutting, because I've die cut the shape first, I can just puzzle piece it back in place and I'm not hiding any of that paper. And then I can go ahead and use that die cut piece on another card, which I will do uh, later on in the video. So here I have the smaller oval that I'm going to be using and I lay that in place just so I could stamp down this smile. Now this is quite a solid stamp and it was brand new, I hadn't inked it up yet so you can see I didn't get perfect inking first time so I just went ahead and inked it up again and brought it a little bit closer to me so I could see straight through the stamp and straight through my block and went ahead and just stamped that down right over the top. If I'd have loaded it up into my Misty obviously that would have been a little bit easier to to do because I could have just you know flipped the lid over again um, but for anyone that doesn't have a stamp positioning tool like the Misty you can definitely just go ahead and look through the block. Okay so I'm building this piece together now I taped my um, kind of two ovals or my oval window with my oval paper you can see the washi tape here on the back I taped that in place just so I could kind of hold it in place until I stick everything down on the card and then I'm just using some regular tape to stick this ribbon piece down um, again just another kind of trick that if I have a piece of ribbon wrapped around a card panel I usually just go ahead and use some tape on the back there to hold it in place and then I'll go ahead and tie my bows separately. I struggle with tying bows you, you may have seen on some of my previous videos and you'll see on this one in just a minute. Um, it takes me a little while so any help I can get I will definitely take. 
So I've stuck this down to a lovely bright yellow card base and it's we have Dexter joining us here. Apologies if you can hear his feet. <laughs> I've been trying to do this video for a while and it is raining non-stop here today. So I'm taking this opportunity while the rain isn't too loud. So do excuse me if you can hear him shuffling around. So I've gone ahead and tied this bow, this teeny tiny little bow. I fussed with it for a while until I was happy with it. And then I'll just go ahead and stick that down on top of the ribbon and no one would know that I didn't have amazing bow tying skills and I haven't just wrapped this piece of ribbon around the card and tied a perfect bow. So I've sped you up just a little bit as I'm adding a tiny bit of shading to the camera just using one colour, nothing too special, just a little bit of shading to give it some dimension and make it slightly different than that white card base. Okay for our next card this one is so very easy and I think it looks really effective and it's a great way to use up some of your scraps. So I've just trimmed down a few strips of patterned paper that had some black accents to it because I wanted to work on this black card base and I felt like that would all coordinate together really nicely. I love that pink paper with the um, black outlined leaves and those black leaves, I think it looks just lovely. So I went ahead and used two strips of that and then one of the pieces where it is black in the background with the pink heart, so it all kind of coordinates really nicely. And then just to add a striking kind of bold pop of color on this otherwise somewhat monochromatic uh, background. I know there's a lot of pink in there as well. I added some more of those yellow wibbly woos and just did the same thing as usual, lay them along the uh, outside edge so it looks like a faux mat and of course saved any of those little pieces and I grabbed this pre-cut ephemera piece. It's a really nice ephemera piece. It's got the gold foiling on it there, so it just adds a little something extra. And then I've got these puffy hearts that I'm adding liquid glue to the back of them. Because those liquid hearts are quite slick, it does take a little while for those to hold in place. So you'll just wanna make sure that you don't kind of knock or nudge your card. Or if you go ahead and try and layer them up like I am here. So I added some adhesive onto that heart in the background and then held the other one in place. And then I was like, this, this is gonna take a while to dry. So I needed an adhesive that was gonna have an instant grab rather than having to wait for something to dry. So I just lay a small black foam square onto my card base and stuck one of the hearts down. And then I layered up some more foam tape behind this piece here. I had to kind of trim it down to be really teeny tiny and just lay that underneath this heart so I had some extra dimension. And again, for such a simple card, it has quite a lot of shine and uh, impact. Okay, on to the next one. You may have noticed I do this thing sometimes with um, with liquid glue where I do like a small dot in each corner. Um, it kind of, I'm not sure if it makes too much of a difference, but it makes me feel like I'm getting the glue right up to the edges without making too much of a mess. And it kind of gives me something to aim for. You would think the end of the card would be enough, but you would be surprised how many times I start running adhesive along the edge of a card and just keep going right off the sides and end up with a mess absolutely everywhere. So just in case you were wondering what it was I was doing when I add those little dots of adhesive, that's my particular hack that I've had to develop for, um, for my strange habit of just throwing adhesive everywhere. So it's nothing technical, um, it's just an issue that I found that I have and a way that I found to solve it. So I'm layering up some pieces here and I know that I'm going to want some dimension. So I'm going to grab some washi tape and stick those down um, in place so I know exactly where to put them. And then I'll add these flat to my card base. You'll notice on the card base I've used this beautiful diagonal striped patterned paper and wherever we've got those two different stripes kind of uh, joining each other, so where the blue joins to the yellow, the yellow joins the pink, the pink to the blue, the blue to the yellow, I went ahead and added some of the yellow peel-offs. So I've layered this entire ephemera piece with some more foam squares and stuck that down in place. And then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not sure what the name of these are, but I'm gonna grab these little pieces. They are adorable. They're almost like um, tassels, but with um, an adhesive piece at the back. And I'm just gonna use that as the centerpiece for this flower, which I think looks really good. 
Then I've got the Dreaming sticker here. This is one of those clear stickers, so it shows through the patterned paper in the background. And then as a final little touch, I'm going to add one of these adorable little leather bows, which I think is so very sweet. And they also come with some foam on the back of them, so they're good to go and stick down. Okay, on to the next card. So you'll notice here I trimmed down my pattern paper and I'm not entirely sure what I was thinking. I got my measurements wrong and it didn't fit with an equal border around all the sides and I loved this piece. I was instantly drawn to it and definitely knew I wanted to use it so I didn't want to have to kind of scrap it and throw it away. So you'll see I just trimmed a tiny piece off which seems almost counterintuitive, <laughs> um, but I knew that I was going to have some pieces layered on top, so if I was a little bit clever about it and stuck one piece far over to the right hand side, just leaving that nice little border that I was trying to go for, and then stuck this other piece over on the left hand side, creating an equal amount of a border as you'll see when I stick it down just here. As long as I cover up that section in the middle, then nobody but you guys will ever know that I made that mistake. And I guess it means I get to save a little bit extra of my paper as well as kind of a side bonus. So I wanted one horizontal and one vertical piece. So I've got these scraps that I, I say scraps, I deliberately trimmed them down for these designs, but you could definitely use your scraps if you prefer. And I'll go ahead and stick that down and instantly it covers up that mistake that I made so you kind of wouldn't see that it was there. Unfortunately, <laughs> I realised that I wanted them in the opposite order, so I did go ahead and carefully peel everything up and then just add a little bit of extra adhesive where it was needed and um, made a bit of a mess. So <laughs> I'll go ahead and clean that up. This is the problem with working with a uh, liquid adhesive. I tend, to, um, I tend to get pretty sticky and my work surface gets pretty sticky too. So I added the Keep It Real um, sticker sentiment. Again, it's another one of those clear ones, so the pattern paper in the background shows through. And then I have another one of the plants. This looks like a succulent to me. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And I added some more foam squares behind that to give it some extra dimension. And then I have this cute little bunny that I stuck down. So I do end up going ahead and moving him and he has a little bit of an accident. But first I will die cut some of that pink patterned paper with a banner die. And it's at this point I'm realizing that the banner is gonna kind of cover him up. And because of the time I took to die cut the banner, um, he'd kind of dried a little bit. So I tried to be careful peeling him up, but I did go ahead and rip off one of his legs. I managed to salvage it, just about, but I felt I felt pretty mean um, pulling off this little bunny's leg. So I stuck him down in his new place and then just moved that leg piece over and stuck that down. And I don't think you can tell on the final um, on the final piece. And I think that's totally fine. I mean, it is all only paper. As much as we may feel somewhat attached to some of the images and designs, it's perfectly fine to mess up and have a little card surgery and go ahead and fix it. Whoever you're sending the card to is gonna appreciate that handmade card anyway. Okay, so here I knew I wanted three little strips of my patterned paper and I wanted them to create a square or a, a rectangle, I guess. <laughs> and so I used some washi tape to temporarily hold them in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some more adhesive, uh, some more adhesive, this is the only adhesive. I'm gonna go ahead and add some adhesive to the back of these pieces and stick it in place. And I found that it was a little bit easier to get perfect placement on my card by doing it this way rather than sticking each of them down individually and kind of eyeballing where the center one would need to go. You could definitely go ahead and measure everything out to make it perfect but I felt like sticking these pieces together just made it easy enough for me to be able to manage and I let that dry for a couple seconds and then just peeled away the washi tape leaving behind those pieces with somewhat perfect placement. So I've sped you up again here because I'm just adding some peel-offs. I've gone back to the traditional uh, pinstripe and I'm adding a mirror finish pinstripe all around the outside edge and of course where the two outside pieces meet the inside piece. And it just really makes a difference. I 
I know I've said it a lot in this video and I say it a lot in all of my videos, but I do think it's pretty impressive the difference a couple of peel-offs can make to a design. So then I'm adding some adhesive onto the back of this piece. I got it on my hand, so I smushed it onto my card base so as not to waste it. Waste not, want not, I guess. And um, then stuck that down to a purple card base. And I'll finish that off with the unforgettable sticker. I believe this came from one of the add-ons that I had this month. And then this camera sticker as well. And I love that design. I think it's actually one of my favorites. Oh, I forgot I added some um, some little black flowers. But I always love hearing from you guys which ones are your favourite, so let me know in the comments section if you have a favourite and which one it is. I always find it really interesting the way everybody's opinion is totally different and the card that I may be least drawn to might be your favourite or my favourite may be your least favourite and um, yeah, it's, um, it's somewhat interesting to me to kind of see what your guys' opinions are. So again, I've grabbed another additional piece of white paper and I've stamped down the You Make Me Smile sentiment. I made sure that I had enough room to die cut this oval around it. That's why I had the oval laid down on the piece of paper here. And then I ran that through my die cut machine and I've grabbed the oval from one of the earlier cards. You'll remember I cut this out so as not to kind of hide that pattern paper because I really loved it. And I'll layer up the uh, You Make Me Smile piece. I'll go ahead and add some more glue onto the back of this piece and stick it down onto the card. I decided to use a yellow card base for this one because it's quite a simple design so I wanted something really bright and cheerful in the uh, in the background piece. But I think it would look equally just as nice on a plain white card uh, card base as well. So here I've got a strip of the grey with kind of the trees so it coordinates a little bit with the design on this grey piece to the, the design on the uh, background piece with the colourful trees. And I use the grid lines on my mat just to help me get perfect placement. And then I'll trim off any of that excess with my non-stick scissors. So you can see my um, my jumper actually kind of coordinates a little bit with um, with some of the colours in this kit. I think the bright yellow on my sleeves and the bright yellow of this card are quite similar, which is something that I didn't notice when I was making the cards. I don't know, maybe it was um, maybe it was subconscious. <laughs> I wonder if I usually coordinate my um, my colours. Somebody mentioned to me when I was wearing this nail polish that it coordinates with my craft mat really well, and again, it was something I hadn't noticed, um, but I can tell. What Watching the video back here. So I've gone ahead and stuck down some of the leaves again, those clear stickers, I was really enjoying those. And then I'm grabbing the yellow peel-offs, this is again the ones that were included in the kit. And I'm using some of my scraps here just to outline these two pieces. And whenever I work with scraps like this, I like to go ahead and um, overlap them just ever so slightly to kind of cover where one ends and the next one begins. And I find that that works really well. So I've grabbed the puffy stickers again and I'm doing something similar to what I did on one of the earlier cards in that I've got foam squares on one side and I'm going to go ahead and layer them up so they've got a super dimensional cute little cluster of hearts there. And then I'll finish this off with another one of those leather bows and that'll be this card finished. Okay, so another super simple card. I think the first one, this one, and maybe the last one are my kind of top three favourites from this month. I don't know, it's hard to pick. Um, but I'm using my ruler again just to create a straight line for me to work on. And I'm grabbing some of these stickers. I love these little like cactus and succulent plants that were in the ephemera and in the sticker pieces. I love these types of plants. I um, I mean, they're, they're one of the few plants that I can kind of keep alive because you just leave them to it, add some water every now and again and they seem to thrive and um, so yeah I went ahead and created a row of these stickers and I'm just going to move this one ever so slightly, um, I didn't particularly like that one, I say move ever so slightly, I got rid of it, um, I swapped it out for this one, I felt it balanced the colours a little bit better and then I'm grabbing these little kind of ferns or vines or whatever it is they, they may be just to add a decorative piece at the bottom there and then in the middle just adding one of these little hearts. 
So I wanted to add some more decoration to the top of the card. You could definitely leave it like this and add a sentiment, but I felt like these little pieces worked perfectly to go in the corners. And then I trimmed away a little bit of the excess and um, rubbed away that pencil line because we, um, we don't want to leave that on there. Although you could definitely create like a, a plant ledge, I guess, by using a peel off. Um, but I, yeah, I finished this off with a sticker sentiment and um, on to the final card. So here I have a black card base again and I'm using one of the patterned papers and I've trimmed this down to be ever so slightly smaller as I have with many of my cards and um, it just leaves that little border around the outside edge and I love this kind of black and white, I think it just looks really elegant. So then I'm grabbing another strip here of one of my favourite pieces and um, I used I believe the other side in one of my cards but then I decided to use the black and white uh, just in a strip here and then I'll add this piece on top just for a little bit of matting and layering and I forgot to trim this piece um, to the right height so I just grabbed that ruler there because it was already on my desk and my craft knife and just trimmed away the excess. The reason I didn't grab my scissors or my paper trimmer and do that is that I wanted to trim it to be the same height as the uh, black and white piece in the background so I wanted to kind of not interrupt the uh, black border of my card base. I hope that makes sense. So then I grabbed another patterned paper and then I covered this camera piece in uh, foam squares and stuck that down and I just think it's so stunning. I didn't add a sentiment to this one, just this little sticker here to finish it off and it's, as I say, it's one of my favourites. Okay, so a final run through of all the cards that we've made today. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section which one's your favourite, which designs you like, and if you're going to recreate any of them, I'd love to see them. You can go ahead and tag me on social media at Crafty Not Shifty. If you don't have the kit or the products that we use today and you're feeling inspired to go shopping, then do check out the uh, information section below because I have links to where you can purchase these items. And I do use affiliate links where possible if I have a affiliate relationship with a particular store or a particular product or brand. I do try to use those affiliate links because I earn a small commission that is at no extra cost to you and it helps me to bring more content to you and more videos. So if you are gonna shop, I'd appreciate if you use the links below. Okay, so that is all the cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And on screen right now are a couple more videos that I think you might enjoy. If you haven't already seen them, then go ahead and click on the thumbnails to be taken straight through to the videos. And if you're not yet a subscriber, go ahead and tap on the logo on screen right now to subscribe to this channel. That is all from me today. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.